Hello and welcome to part seven and hopefully the final part of this Tropical Terrain series. This is David Ward. And uh, when last I left, we had just uh, finished adding the ground plane and you know giving it some, some textures and, and putting everything onto it, all of our rocks and flowers and the, and the foliage and everything. So now that we've got everything situated on our scene, we need to make it look pretty. So let's go ahead and start working on that. Let's grab our camera. And over in our camera settings, uh, we're going to do a couple of different things. We're going to turn on mist so we can see a representation of, of the mist. That orange line, yellow orange line there, is basically the start and stop of the mist. So it's going to start fading here onto the depth axis. And when it gets to this point, it's going to be solidly faded out. So starting fading out here and fading out gradually until it completely fades out there, if that makes sense. And that'll be a way to give it some kind of a misty air look. Um, what, our, what us artists called uh, atmospheric perspective gives it you know a, a lot more sense of depth. It's the moisture in the air. The further we, you get away, the more pale it looks. So um, I think the default settings there are probably going to be okay. Maybe we'll increase it just a little bit. And the way you do that is you go to the world settings right there and scroll down here until you get to the mist settings. Go ahead and check that. Expand the box. And let's set it to start a little bit further away and maybe the depth a little bit lower. So maybe about right there. We still want to be able to see the trees in the background, but we want them to be washed out a little bit. So. Uh, so that's going to be good for our mist, and now I want to go ahead and turn on, go back to our camera settings, and let's go ahead and turn on the depth of field. Well, it's, it's kind of on already, but right now it's set to, you know, everything's going to be in focus. So I want to change that to just focus, if we increase this, actually we need to turn on limits right there as well. So if we increase this, you can see a little X there, and that's basically the the focal point. So if we increase that to about, let's make it 8.5. So we're kind of focusing there on the flowers and shrubs right there in front of us. Okay, so now if we were to render, take it a little, take it about a minute. So I'll go ahead and uh, pause recording while that's record while that's rendering, or I'll pick it up when it's got something to see. So we'll be right back. Okay, well, it's still rendering, but I uh, just want to say it's it's kind of difficult to see that these are faded out because the the placeholders are are already gray essentially, and they're kind of fading into a gray background, so it's kind of difficult to see uh, them being faded out. So let's go ahead and escape out of the render there, and um, let's grab our light source right here, and right now it's set to sun, which is what we want, but let's go ahead and turn on sky. So it's going to give it a nice bluish, whitish background. Background. Now you could do that two different ways. You can use the sky setting here, or if you just want to go to the world settings, you scroll all the way up, you can change the horizon color here to like a, a real pale blue color, and then go ahead and turn on blend sky, and then change the zenith color to like a darker blue. So you can do it like that. I prefer to do it the sun, with, the, with the sun. I don't know. It makes it look more believable in my opinion. but. Um, anyway, so our background's going to be like this now instead of that solid gray. So if we look through our camera, and one, one thing I'm going to do real quick just to make things render a little faster, let's grab our, our ground plane, and you know what, we never did, okay, it's named, I was going to say we never did name it, but it automatically named it landscape with the, the A&T landscape generator, so we'll just leave it as is. Um, but let's go to our modifiers, and just so it renders a little faster, let's turn off uh, the rocks and the flowers. So we'll just we're just rendering. I'll turn off the view the view of them and the render settings. So we're just going to see uh, the placeholder models uh, uh, meshes and the ground plane, and that those will fade out properly. So we can get a quicker, faster idea of how this is going to look once it renders. So I'll go ahead and let you watch as it renders. You can already see that. These bushes in the background already look a lot further away. So we got the, the mist settings is, is what's making those fade out. So that looks nice. And the scene has a lot more depth now. So you can see that mist settings really handy for that. 
Okay, so we're getting good, a good sense of what that's looking like. It's looking good, so I'm going to go ahead and escape out. And let's go ahead and turn everything back on here. Actually, tell you what, let's do one thing real quick. Let me go ahead and render out a full render. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. It's a full render. And the reason I wanted to render this out is because I want to go into the node editor and I want to adjust this before I worry about rendering out the full-fledged scene. So uh, we'll go ahead and minimize that. And let's split our window here quite a bit more. There we go. Let's go to the node editor. And remember, we set the focal point on the camera up. So that's that was rendered into the information of our render. So uh, let's go to our node tree there, use nodes, and go and set backdrop. And then we're going to add an output viewer. There we go. And let's grab the image point there, drag it to the viewer's image endpoint input. Ah. There we go. And now we can see the. I'm going to go ahead and hit T over here so we can collapse that even further. So now we can see the the background of the window here is is our render layer. So uh, the focal point. Let's add in a filter, and it's going to be a defocus right there. Just a simple little filter. And we'll add that in there. And you can already see some of it's blurred a little bit, but uh, that's not the control we want. So we want to say use the Z information there to the Z information in here. And everything's pixelated. Why is that? Well, that's because we got preview set right there and we don't want that. Uh, we want the type to be, let's make it octagonal and go ahead and set the, uh, okay, use Z buffer. We need to check that. Okay, so now the f-stop is set to 128, which is essentially infinity. It's going to focal. It's going to be focused 100%. So we need to lower that down. Let's make it way lower. Set it to about. Let's try 20. See what that looks like. And you can see some of the background started start started blurring. <laughs> Tongue tied. Uh, okay, so if you make that even lower, the background's going to just keep blurring more and more. So the, the more you do it, it might start making your scene look like a miniature because, you know, miniatures have a very short focal length. But we, we don't want it that much. So let's go ahead and set it. Let's see what 15 looks like. I think 15, between 15 and 20 will work. So let's, let's you know, uh, kind of, I can never think of the words I'm trying to think of. Uh, I don't know. Let's make it halfway in between. So let's make it 17.5. And so we got a nice subtle blur back there with the atmospheric perspective, the mist settings going back there. And then up front, we have a nice clear. If I break, open up F11, bring my render panel back up. Where's it at? There it is. I've got too many windows open over here. Okay. Uh, right now, it's set to, to show the render result, uh, but we need to have it show the viewer node. So we can see the nice crisp and clear for the most part plants up front and then it as it fades further back they start kind of blurring out and and fading out at the same time so that's pretty well what we want in our scene so it's, it's pretty much it's it's ready to render out the full-fledged version now so let me go ahead and jump back to here and before we go any further let's go ahead and set the defocus here to go to the exported composite the final render as well as you know right now it's going just to the viewer which is the preview we also want it to be the final version so um, okay so we come back over here let's go ahead and save while we're at it and let's turn our everything back on over here and we'll come to the layer that has our placeholders and let's go ahead and set those to be the high-res versions And finally, tree high. There we go. So go back to our let's go back to our camera view, and then we'll go to the layer one, so we don't have to try to rotate back around. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and save as. Come on, file. Save. Okay. 
And now we'll go ahead and render. And and uh, like I said, it took about nine minutes last time. So it'll probably take about the same, same amount of time this time. And I'll go ahead and pause recording. And we'll be right back when it's done rendering. So okay and here we go as you can see it almost it took a little little less time than last time i'm not sure what factors caused that but uh 826 but uh, as you can see it uh, added the the background the mist and everything i can see it's a little bit too blurry now so let's come back here and expand this window out um these are taking too long let's go just go to a setting that doesn't have high geometry on it do 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 there we go. Okay. Now, it's a little bit too blurry back there, so let's go ahead and set that to, say, 25. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like through here. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better. Um, so there we go. I think that's, uh, that's a good stopping point for this little tutorial series. That <laughs> part 6 was 35 minutes long. This part's only 11 so far, but... Uh, Okay, so there we go. That's how you get a nice tropical landscape. You can do the same technique for other types of landscapes, just make different types of trees. Or, you know, if you want to take this scene and, you know, make a few different types of flowers, a, a few different types of trees, and just use the same technique, you'll get uh, some, some nice results there. So that's going to do it for this uh, tropical terrain series. Um, if you guys, you know, make something, I'd like to see some video responses, maybe. Uh, so just show me what you got there, and thanks for watching. So we're all done with this, and uh, hope you learned a thing or two. Hope you had a good time, and again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.